hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Rose Wright and I write and narrate Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction. Thank you so much to Chocoluck Chips for letting me use their amazing art in my thumbnail. If you want to check them out, their info will be linked below, so go show them all of the love. They definitely deserve it. Welcome to Day 5 of Adrian at April. If you have missed the other parts, make sure to check those out. I will leave a link down below. So please enjoy Adrian at April, Day 5, Undercover. Marinette? Tiki tapped on Marinette's arm with no response. In a voice much louder and even more shrill, the Kwame yelled, Marinette! Are you going to stare at that picture all day? I'm sorry, Tiki. Did you say something? She replied in a daze, eyes locking with a smiling picture of Adrian doing one of his typical model looks. Tiki let out a huff, flitting her tiny body in front of the photo, attempting to obscure her view of the blonde model. Marinette sighed out deeply. <sighs> okay, you have my attention. Marinette, what's going on? You've been staring at that picture for... She held out her hands to count the hours, but realized she didn't actually have fingers. Distressed, Tiki said, I don't know, but it's been a while. Marinette took Tiki in her hands, stroking her head, smoothing her antennae. Sorry, Tiki. He's just so cute. She said, obviously struggling to keep her eyes fixed on her Kwame. They desperately wanted to drift back to the picture of Adrian that had tiny hearts surrounding his handsome face. Why don't you just stare at the real Adrian? I, I mean... Tiki attempted to rescind her response, best not to encourage her. Why don't you just go talk to him? Marinette burst out laughing. What? What's so funny? Just go talk to him? Marinette repeated humorously. Yeah, right. I can't just go talk to Adrian Agrest. Tiki's face twisted in genuine confusion. Why not? Marinette's face brightened. Wait, I can't just talk to him. But you! Tiki made a tiny X with her arms to ward off this dreadful idea. I can't talk to him, Marinette. What are you even thinking? No, no talking to him. You can spy on him, see what he's doing, sniff his pillow. What? Maybe see if he's staring at a picture of me, too. She spun around wistfully, doing a badly choreographed ballet routine. Absolutely not! You're so obsessed with him, you go undercover! Tiki turned her back to Marinette. She would not do Marinette's dirty work. Undercover, Marinette echoed. Yes, that's it. Tiki, you're a genius. Marinette stumbled to her closet, throwing clothes upon clothes out into the floor. Tiki narrowly dodged to not be swallowed by a jumper flying past. Marinette slipped an arm through a slightly oversized suit jacket. Then she reached into her FX tackle box full of fake blood, prosthetics, and the like. She grabbed some spirit gum, dabbing it on her upper lip, adding a mustache that looked suitable for Mario. Marinette, what exactly are you doing? Tiki asked, skeptically, unsure if she wanted the answer. Going undercover, like you said. Marinette said cheerfully, admiring her new man appearance in the mirror. It wasn't believable, though. It looked like a cheap budget costume from a theater company that had no men, so they had to work something out. Marinette, I was teasing! Tiki protested, but it fell on deaf ears. Marinette stood in the floor-length mirror, straightening her ill-fitting jacket, tugging on her suspenders. How do I look? She struck a pose. Tiki's face fell flat and expressionless. Still like a girl! Marinette shrugged. Well, that's just your opinion. Come on, Tiki! Marinette patted her shirt pocket, to which Tiki reluctantly flitted inside, having this feeling of dread that things were about to go wrong. The doors of the aggressed mansion were swung wide open as the help passed through, carrying boxes and trays of food. Here's my chance, Marinette thought. She stood a little taller, relying on her platform shoes to add a few extra inches to her height. So far, so good. No one had noticed anything strange about Marino. You, sir! An authoritative voice commanded from behind. Marinette slowly turned. Good evening! She bowed, then noticed who spoke to her. Mr. Agrest. Yup, she was doomed. 
Here's where he died. He looked her up and down. And you are? He said, obviously not caring about the answer. I'm Marino, caterer extraordinaire at your service. She struggled to keep her voice from trembling under his withering stare. Of course you are. He said, his lips curling upward into what appeared to be his best attempt at a smile. It felt forced and awkward, but Marinette just wanted to wiggle out of this encounter as fast as possible. If she could just slip away. Gabriel snapped twice, a tray of fresh cookies appearing in his hands. Take these to my son. Don't get lost, and don't take your time. We've got a busy day. Marinette knew better than to ask what was going on today. She just nodded quickly, disappearing up the stairs. She closed the door behind her, breathing in and out slowly. She made it. Finally. Can I help you? Adrian spoke as he finished tying one of his signature orange converse. Yes, you can, Adrian. Marinette said dreamily, thinking about running into his arms. She then violently shook her head, deepening her voice. I mean, uh, here. She handed him the tray of warm cookies. Your father wanted me to give these to you. Oh, he said glumly. Thank you. He took the cookies, looking at them, then placing them on his bedside table. Sir, is everything okay? Marinette, still in her man persona, took a seat next to Adrian. She struggled to keep calm while sitting on his bed. Okay, I just have to control the crazy. I can do that. Adrian gave Marino the side eye before proceeding. It's father. He makes time for all of his most important clients, but me. I can't remember the last time I had a normal meal with him. I just... He covered his mouth, staring at Marinette, getting uncomfortably close to her face. I, uh, wh what are you doing? She stammered, struggling to keep up the man facade. Adrian backed away, wearing the same saddened expression. Sorry, it's just I... I typically don't open up to people that easily. You're easy to talk to, that's all. What's your name? Marinette shot up so he wouldn't see her flustered. Oh, I'm Marino, and thank you, sir. She made a loop around Adrian's room, making a mental note of everything. The scent the minimalist decor, the video games and mangas that lined his shelves stretching to the ceiling, and a familiar photograph on his computer desk. The faces smiled back at her. It was Marinette, Adrian, Alia, and Nino, before they saw Jagged Stone in concert last summer. What a happy night. Each team sported merch from their favorite singer with washable purple streaks in their hair. Adrian's arm was wrapped around Marinette and Nino. Looking at the picture made Marinette smile, taking her back to that night. Adrian came up from behind. This night feels like a long time ago. It's the only time I've ever been to a concert. Who are these people? Friends of yours, I assume? Marinette said, trying to feign ignorance. Maybe she could really find out how Adrian feels about her. It was risky, of course, but she was undercover after all. Yeah, he said. Marinette didn't have to look at him to know he was smiling. These are my best friends. You know, it's weird. A year ago, I had no friends. Really? Who wouldn't want to be your friend? Well, you know, with my father being who he is, everyone wants to be my friend because I'm slightly famous. He scoffed, speaking mostly to himself. It's ridiculous. Marinette searched to ease the tension. So, what's with that dark-haired girl? Huh? Adrian looked back at the picture, his eyes lighting up. Oh, that's Marinette. She's great. Marinette felt her heart swell twice its size. She could have left well enough alone, but that wasn't her style. She had to press further. In her best man voice, she said, She's, uh, pretty cute. Adrian's eyes scanned the picture. She is. Yeah, I like Marinette a lot. Okay, girl, calm down. He likes you! Her internal monologue squealed. Wait, as a friend? Or more than a friend? Or like a person you have to tolerate? She shuddered at the thought. Have you told her? Marinette breathed out, hoping she didn't seem too nosy. Well, no, but... 
Adrian stops speaking, looking at Marinette. You, uh, what's going on with your mustache? Adrian pointed out curiously. My mustache. Her hands drifted to her face, noticing the end of her Mario stash. Oh, crap. She turned around, pressing it tightly against her skin, but it was no longer sticky. Maybe due to her nervous sweats. It was holding on just barely. When she turned around, Adrian's brow furrowed in a mix of anger and confusion. What's going on? Who are you, really? Adrian, I can explain. I... She said in her normal voice as it broke, trying to conceal tears. You better start to or I'm going to rip that fake mustache off your face. He said, stepping into her. Marinette took off the half-stuck-on stash. She watched his face fall. It's just me. I'm sorry. Marinette said, bowing her head. Why didn't she just listen to Tiki? Tiki was right about everything and now she had really made a mess. Marinette. Adrian spoke flabbergasted. How did you... Why did you... He had trouble forming a complete sentence. So much didn't make sense. Nothing she did ever made sense. She craved to crawl back in her bed and pretend this was nothing more than a bad dream. Let me be honest. Marinette started, then murmured, for the first time today. I really like you, and I thought if I came here, I could find out if you liked me, and I guess it kind of worked, but massively backfired. Marinette embraced herself for what was to come. She thought he might be angry, tell her he hated her, but he just stared at her and somehow that felt worse. Why didn't you just tell me how you felt? The same reason I guess you didn't, she said simply. He chuckled. You've got a point. He took a seat on his sofa in silence. Marinette sat beside him. So, do you actually like me? Yeah, a lot actually. You? Yeah, since your first day. Marinette admitted. Her gaze was stuck on her hands. You don't make a very good guy, Adrian joked. Good enough to fool you. She returned his laugh, feeling more at ease. I guess that's true. They sat together in another moment of silence before Adrian broke the tension. I happen to have this entire tray of cookies that haven't been eaten yet, if you... That's not even a question, yes! She said excitedly. The mention of the sugary snack reminded her that she'd been so busy fawning over him she forgot to eat. They munched on the cookies, chatting. Some crumbs fell onto Marinette's shirt which she could feel Tiki eating in her pocket with gusto. She slipped a cookie in her pocket for the little Kwame. Tiki had been through so much today. Marinette realized she had been talking to Adrian like a normal human, in mostly normal sentences. She didn't want to jinx it, but it made all of her fear seem silly. Who knew it could be this easy? Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, leave a comment for Mr. Algorithm. That would be amazing. If you don't know what to comment, say Marino. As always, stay miraculous!